The summer festival season has begun in earnest. Markets both agricultural and artistic in nature seem to be on the to-do list nearly every weekend. Now, there are events to be sure, but they also play an important role in the economy, local and global. NMIF producer Matt Grubb spent a day this week looking at the impact of the Santa Fe International Folk Art Market. In the old days, it, you know, it was traditional to give them as, as a marriage basket, a present. This is a typical um, Tonga basket from the southern province of Zambia. What's it like to think of something that is a part of your culture, something that you use every day, like a basket for winnowing, mm -hmm. uh, as a piece of art? I think it uh, takes a little bit of a, like exposure because you think of it as something that is not, in terms of price, it's not something that is valuable. It's just something that you use every day and you can get up, make another one. You know, we talk about job creation. Job creation has become almost a politicized term. Well, I think there's a new paradigm for job creation, and it's people like this in these countries. You give them a tiny bit of opportunity, and they go a long way with it. Coming to the folk art market, especially for the artists that I work with, they have seen that their art is actually more valuable than a piece of uh, thing that they use every day in the kitchen or to carry something and they've put more value to their work because they know that they can actually make money out of it and have it become a business. So 500 people are being fed you know, by these earrings and this jewelry. So it's a great part of the story. 90% of the money that's earned at the market goes home with the artists. What does the additional income mean um, for the people who are making these baskets at home? Um, in one word, joy. <laughs> joy because it means more work in the community, which means more income in the community. And in the past, they've been able to buy goats, they've been able to buy cattle, they've been able to buy a plow, which in the past they had to hire from somebody else, but now they're able to hire out their plows. So they, it means they can buy another plow or two, and get more income from that. And they're able to send their children to school. And it just generally means more e economic power to the women. I think, you know, if you, try, if you give someone just a little bit of a chance um, in many places, they will really seize upon that opportunity. And that's what we think, you know, the, the market itself is really apolitical, but in a way, just providing people with um, one weekend's worth of opportunity is a pretty political act, you know, and the impacts are amazing. This year, over 360,000 family members will be impacted by what's earned at the market. Tell me a little bit about um, the training that's offered. It's not just the, the days of the market in which they're selling. There's a, there's a lot of training. That's true. I think most people, because that's what they see, you know, regard the folk art market as an event. We're always the second weekend in July. And indeed we are, and we love the event. Um, it's a lot of fun. But uh, kind of it's a little deeper than that because before we turn the artists uh, loose, if you will, in the market, we give the new ones, at least, a whole day of training. We teach them about pricing for the global market. How to talk to the American um, consumer, uh, how to handle difficult customers. <laughs> <laughs> we teach them about customer service expectations in the United States, which are a little different maybe than what they experience back home. How to market your product, how to display your product, um, what is a good price point uh, in the American market, because you don't want to overprice your product so that you can't um, sell it, because some people have very, have very high expectations of um, the kind of price they can get in the American market, but there are lots of factors to consider. Coincidental with that is advanced training for artists who've been to the market before and who show interest and promise in learning more. We, we were partnering with the Dallas Market Center. So 19 uh, artists and artist groups who were sort of had the capacity, had, they were ready to maybe tackle wholesale, went there and were very successful. And then another whole group of more advanced artists are uh, the Thursday before market being trained in thinking about the wholesale market. Well, what does it take? You know, like it's not for everybody, right? When you went to Dallas, um, did you find that it's a different experience marketing baskets on a larger scale to people? What you're looking for in Dallas is um, a customer 
who wants to buy in quantity and you're looking for a long-term relationship, um, you're looking for a relationship where somebody can email you or pick up the phone and say, look, I need 100, 200 pieces of X, Y, Z. You have to have enough capacity to fill orders. You have to have sophistication to know how to ship abroad and that sort of thing. They will help you in, in order to ensure that your goods arrive safely, that you've done your paperwork properly, that you've boxed your, your product properly. All that was an education for me. And I can honestly say that what would have most probably taken me a couple of months to learn about exporting baskets to America, um, I learned from a package from the market. The stories behind all of this art have to be amazing. Tell me about some of it. Oh, sure. Well, they're very varied. Um, this basket is from Rwanda, and there about 4,000 women are part of a cooperative. And it actually, it's a very traditional form, but it really took uh, root after the terrible 1994 genocide. A woman named Janet Ikubana, who's been at the market many times, uh, was running a hotel and sh women would come with a basket in their hands and say, please, I need food for my family. Can't you buy my basket? And she began to realize in, in a country that was mainly just widows and orphans at that point, uh, that perhaps they could make a living through this. So she started this cooperative and now it's really successful. It's a major exporter out of Rwanda. This scarf is from Madagascar. And this is a very, um, comes from a very traditional raw silk tradition of shrouds, actually, um, that are still used to bury the dead in um, the highlands of Madagascar. Well, through the influence of a Peace Corps worker who had been sent there and is an enterprise development specialist, uh, she recognized the beauty of these scarves and said to the women, why don't we apply to the folk art market? So they did, and they came last year and they did like $32,000 in a weekend. And they have used the money so well. They had all of these collective dreams. Um, for example, trekkers come to their village. They're about the only tourists who get there. So they thought, well, if only we could offer a shower and a little restaurant and you know, little shacks kind of. Sure. Work. So they built those with the money that they earned from the folk art market last year. So this leads to that, <laughs> leads exactly. to Exactly, and now they're coming what? back again. Countries that were formerly part of the Soviet bloc, we see amazing commitment to entrepreneurship. They are so ready and eager to do business. Um, and so uh, in Kyrgyzstan, the traditional clothing was, because it's a cold place, was made out of this thick felted material, very stiff. And it's not really something most people you know, in this day and age would want to wear. Sure. It's kind of itchy, you know, and stiff. <clears throat> so they started, these seven sisters uh, began this tradition of using the same felting technique and doing it on hand loom silk that they get. And oh my, I tell you, this booth that had these scarves last year was practically like Filene's basement. <laughs> you could see the, uh, you know, scarves flying up in the air because women were, you know, flying at them. Sure, and, sure. So, wow. And they're very well priced. So they were in Dallas and they got a bunch of orders, uh, which was great. What would these be used for traditionally? Well, these would be used for winnowing, you know, after they, they've harvested and they've um, removed the, the corn from the, the husks. And then they would want to sift it to make sure that the corn is clear. And then it would be used for okay. transporting. <laughs> you know, like a maze from the field. Does it take some time for them to get used to the idea that, that they can be both? They can be a means of income and support and also a tool? Definitely takes time. Uh, when I started working out with, uh, with, with them, when I started working with them, because um, they have seasons, they're primarily peasant, peasant, what we call pe peasant farmers. And they're seasons when they're plowing, and they're preparing their fields and they would much rather do that than try and fulfill an order because for them it's like if I don't plow now I won't have anything to eat 
But then I, 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 I try to educate them that, look, if you take time to make these baskets, you actually have a little extra money in your pocket that you could get somebody to help you plow your fields while you're busy with your baskets. And I think they've um, come to a point where they realize that they can actually balance the two. <laughs> this is really opening up obviously us to all these different cultures, but the other side of it, the entrepreneurial side of it, it seems like a great place to hang your hat. It is, and then there's one other aspect I think we shouldn't miss, because we're a grassroots, you know, we were born in Santa Fe and we have 1,600 volunteers, and, and, and Santa Fe opens its heart, you know, to these artists. So the kind of person-to-person -person diplomacy aspect here, people really do develop friendships, not only artists to artists, but a visitor to artists and sometimes they go and actually visit and help the artists or they make donations to them directly for certain things. Um, but I think you know it's, it's really important that we all begin to understand one another and, and the market is really about that too. The market runs this weekend on Saturday and Sunday. It's on Museum Hill up there in Santa Fe. For more information on our website, NewMexicoInFocus.org.